All right, three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of Taco Court Fantasy Football League Podcast. I'm your host, Nate. Today, I'm joined once again by Tony. You can follow the pod on all socials, at Taco Court Pod, also YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for listening there. Be sure to rate us and give us a review. Leave a comment. Tell us we suck. Tell us we're good. Tell us we're, we're okay. Tell us what we can improve on. Tell us what we should stop doing, like this podcast. Tony, how's it going? It's going good. Thanks for having me on once again. Um, mm-hmm. Is it March yet? Are we, are we at March? We got we got 47 days until pitchers and catchers report, Nate. 47? That 47 seems like days. a good number. Yeah. We should do a countdown every week of how many days until pitchers, catchers report, and then do something with that number for the podcast episode. I agree. Um, I'm, I'm ready for baseball. Uh, most of my fantasy teams are eliminated. Got some like best ball and some DFS stuff still going. But mm-hmm. the Rams suck. The Lakers suck. The Kings are doing okay. I guess I can watch them when I we're talking game. LA Kings because you're not a LA Sacramento Kings, Kings fan. I don't, or else you'd, I don't, yeah, you'd be I a fan of a winner. Yeah, I don't know. Get out of here. I don't do the two basketball, like two franchise thing in a sport, but yeah, I'm ready for baseball. I'm ready for the season to start 100%. Nice, nice. All right, so our podcast has five segments we're going to go over. We'll go top of mind, manager on manager news and notes, top five of a draft this week. And then we'll leave you with the rave before we get into bang of the week. Leave you off for the week. Get into the new year. Top of mind for you, Tony. You experienced this a little bit recently. Airline travel, Southwest primarily. What the hell's okay. going on, Nate? Does anyone so, know? I've been seeing so, pictures of bags like across the country, Midwest, East Coast, West Coast, uh, down south. Like I don't, I don't understand what the what the deal is. So I got an insight on this because I flew out right in the middle of that big ass ice snow negative 25 degree wind chill storm that hit denver right like we went to our buddy brandon who we'll get to later in this show uh his he re-enlisted into the world's greatest space force it's his last time he did a little ceremonial thing it was pretty cool went over that but uh that night i flew out of denver or in the morning but i left that night after we recorded your show um most mostly just because I drive like an O2 Honda Civic and I need time to get up there when there's bad conditions. <laughs> I'd rather be there five hours early than be there way too late, right? And I yeah, heard about sure. all these delays and stuff. I got to Denver at like 2 30, 2 o'clock in the morning, and there was thousands of people in the airport, like sleeping everywhere because flights right. got canceled, all this kind of stuff, right? There's in the baggage claim area, there's just bags laid out everywhere. I mean, thousands of bags, like 10 rows deep from baggage claim one all the way to 14 backed up to where they give you the skis and all that kind of shit. Right. So, um, I had no problems flying out in the morning. It was perfectly fine. Flew to Jersey into Newark, went to New York city for the weekend. And then on my way back, I got delayed in Newark for about 10 to 12 hours. My -hmm. flight was supposed to leave at like six. I think I left somewhere two something, three o'clock in the morning, got back to Denver around four four something in the morning get to denver and the people at the baggage claim are talking sorry i got the burps um people in the baggage claim are talking about it right and then one of the united clerks is telling us like yo it got bad because there was negative 20 something degree weather outside Mm -hmm. right you got all these people handling bags out in denver out in this cold ass weather the problem was is that with the ice and the snow planes could not leave the jetway right? The walking bridge thing or whatever. So all the planes that flew in and were able to land because they got the runway taken care of Hmm. had nowhere to park at the airport. So people were stranded on planes for hours on end while they tried to get rid of ice that was behind all these planes that are parked. Well, in doing that, other flights got canceled because they were like, yo, we can't take any, anybody out of here. Right. They were going to move the planes without passengers on them. So people's planes got canceled but their bags are already checked in. So you can't, they don't have the capacity to go through the entire airports with a luggage and be Mm -hmm. like, okay, here's your luggage, right? Get it back. It has to fly essentially to where it's supposed to go. And that's on like the next flight. So people were left in Denver without their luggage. People got to Denver, uh, like, and they landed, got to their gate three, four hours late because they had to do all this work just to get people off the planes or whatever. And then people who were flying in, to denver say for to go to breckenridge for christmas or something or veil or something go snowboard um their flights got canceled coming into denver because they're flying from like the midwest 
going east. Mm -hmm. So all that's where all that storm was going. So it ended up causing people to miss all their flights, but all their bags came to Denver later on. They had to rebook their flights, but then they wouldn't get here for a couple of days or something like that. Right. And it, it was just a pain in the ass. Uh, but the lady said at the airport, what ended up happening is because all of these airport workers are technically like federal contractors because mm -hmm. the FAA runs airports. Right. Yep. So they have like mandatory overtime rules and stuff embedded in their contracts and stuff. So these people were out there working like super, super long hours in ne minus negative yeah. 20 weather, right? And they're dealing with all this luggage that's coming in and nowhere to put it. So all of the Southwest carts on Denver's like flight line area are full of bags. They had to bring in tractor trailers. They like rented trailers so they could put bags in them. So there's like when I flew in when I fly in Monday morning, the 20 or I end up getting here the 27th morning of the 27th, there was like 15 tractor trailers parked out on the flight line area. Jesus. And she said they all, it's just full of people's luggages. Right. But what happened was, is that all these people were forced to work, but they couldn't do anything because there was no room to put anything and they're being forced to be outside in this weather. Right. Mm -hmm. And she said 95% of the force quit. That's nuts. Cause they were just like, fuck it. I'm not doing this. Yeah. What? Like, I'm not even moving. So I'm just standing out this like, yeah, I got all this weather gear on, but it doesn't help at negative 25. Right. Mm -hmm. So she said, everybody quit. So there's like other people from like, that are normally working like concession stands or whatever that are getting hired by the airport to go outside and do shit. And they're like, yeah, this sucks. So they, they're, hold they're on. they had an air, they had an airport full of people. Why didn't they just start handing out cash? You guys want to come yeah. load some bags? You want to find yeah. a bag for for Brittany Thompson? You know, there was a, the airport. There was a clip on Twitter I saw, or maybe it was TikTok or something, but it showed a Southwest pilot, a pilot who was flying a Southwest plane, helping the people load baggage up onto the plane wow. or whatever like that, because there's such a shortage, and it happened all across the country, and that was like the big thing that ended up happening was yeah. people like nine. She, she said ninety five percent of the force that works outside doing luggage quit. It's got to take a, take a page out of the military's book. Cause every time I deployed, once we got to wherever we were going, Kuwait, Qatar, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they, they grab a couple people who weren't, um, the logistics people, the LRS people, and we'd mm -hmm. start throwing bags. Yeah. We start throwing <laughs> bags off the plane onto whatever, whatever truck to get them to yeah. uh, go into where they were going. Yeah. I think if you would have told people, Hey, we got one guy who's going to be under the plane, just, handing out bags down this conveyor belt everybody would have been like cool with it but there's like all these safety rules and stuff but yeah, yeah she yeah. said everybody fucking quit so that That's was pretty nuts. crazy and then newark's airport their air traffic control station so one of the reasons i got delayed was one of their air traffic control stations uh had a fire compression suppression system fail and it burst mm -hmm. because of the cold weather so they're using like the airlines mini traffic towers to do all of the air traffic control for like one of the most you know populated and flown through cities busiest um, time of the year it, at the busiest time of the year yeah. united's like um what is it called like it's like a they call it like an mrd or something like that it's like your maintenance record uh distribution thing or whatever but they have to check out the plane before they go right mm -hmm. so but what they have to do is they have to print out this piece of paper give it to the flight crew to certify that yeah the plane is good to go yeah right and they can't leave until they have that paper. Well, United's entire system across the entire company went down that allows them to access that mm -hmm. document and print it. So that caused all these delays for United too, but it was like, pretty crazy, but it was, it was all right. Newark's not a bad airport. Um, United pushed a couple of vouchers. So I got like 40, 60 bucks worth of food drinks while I was in the airport or something like that. It kind of made the time go by. Newark's got a lot of energy in that airport too. Like mm -hmm. they have a, in the United terminal, there's a piano in there and it just says for your playing pleasure. Right. So random people who are just going through the airport know how to play piano would just sit down and be playing piano. And there's just be like tons of people around them. So it was like, it was a cool little vibe. It was fun. Um, not a lot of people where I was that are like arguing, bitching or whatever. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like, you know, what am I going to do? Like not, you can't get upset. It's not getting the plane out. Right. Yeah. You're, your complaint is not going to be like, you know what? Let's get this plane <laughs> off the ground, guys. <laughs> yeah, you, you throwing a tantrum is just going to get your ass on Reddit and Twitter. Yeah, yeah you're I've definitely seen a couple of those videos. <clears throat> you're definitely like, I don't know, like 
you don't think that those companies want planes going. That's how they make money, right? Like yeah. they're having to issue refunds and stuff. But I wonder what not... the lounges look like. Did you have access to any lounges while you were no, going through? I didn't. No, uh, I bet they were packed. Yeah, um, I saw tons of people like going up the escalator to like the United Lounge in mm -hmm. Jersey or whatever like that. But I didn't see many people coming down it. So, gotcha. um, yeah, but it was okay. Like, I don't know. What do you? I don't know. It, it would just be nice if the airlines like put out a message of this happened we're sorry right or yeah. something like that right just rather than staying quiet so i think i think southwest ceos come out i forget his name he's come out and said we we messed up bad sorry yeah yeah but I, um charlotte's friend uh her mom came through flying i think from like idaho through denver yeah flight got canceled in denver flying through southwest what they weren't able to rebook so her bag's still at the airport yeah uh, her husband my wife's friend she drove up there and i think they drove him drove her home or got a different flight home eventually um, for Christmas, like completely changed their plans, mm -hmm. but uh, they didn't give them any vouchers, no, no food, no hotel, nothing. Yeah, just a refund for the ticket. That was it. Yeah, yeah, that it's it's pretty crazy. I don't know. Top of your mind, I I just kind of you stole You're mine. Good. You're good. Um, top of mind, really, right now, what I'm thinking about is so we got this snowstorm coming in through Colorado right now, right? And yep. we got some snow accumulating outside over the last hour. It looks pretty good. It's coming down pretty yep. heavy too. So one thing on top of my mind. I hope that we don't work tomorrow. <laughs> they already pushed out a delay for work, but I'm hoping I don't work tomorrow because I'm probably going to stay up and edit this thing. Um, but another top of mind thing is just traveling alone. So I just traveled alone over the weekend. I talk, we've talked about it over you know a few podcasts, whatever mm -hmm. like that, a few episodes. Went to New York City by myself. Um, kind of, it could be kind of scary, but at the same time, like I kind of like the chaos. It's really calming for me, like mm -hmm. big city and just move, 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 move. Right. It was super, super pleasant. And I don't know if it's just cause it was the Christmas time or something like that, but people were like in a really good mood. Yeah. Um, you didn't see any fights, no, nothing crazy or whatever like that. Everybody helping out like homeless people on the streets. Cause that snow, that weather that we got followed me to New York. So luckily I wasn't in like Buffalo where they got like six feet of snow and oh houses God, are turning yeah. to igloos, but, um, it was just like, you know, negative 15 or something like that with a wind chill or whatever, but you know, bundle up, you're fine in that city or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's enough buildings to block a lot of the wind. So it just depends on which direction the wind's going as to what, if it goes down avenues or streets, right? Like it's yeah. just going to be blasting. So if you're in the middles or whatever like that, or, you know, like a, like I did ice skating and stuff in all three major ones in the New York city area, but there's so many buildings around all those stuff that it didn't really cause any issues or something like that. But people were super nice. I met a lot of people while I was out there, just like I was ice skating and then like see someone or whatever. And they're like, Hey, you're doing good or whatever. Right. While you're like yeah. about to bust your ass and then you start talking to them. And then next thing you know, it's like, Hey, you want to go grab a drink? Cause like one of the ice rinks, I think it's in Bryant park. It's like right in right on the backside of Rockefeller, but uh they have like this kind of like a lodge area but it's all outdoors and it's it, the ice rink is right in the middle of a christmas market so there's like all mm -hmm. these local vendors and all this kind of stuff but there's food they got a bar up there you can get your hot chocolate whatever you want right drinks or something like that so like someone i was around they were just like hey you want to go grab a drink <laughs> like yeah let's get off this thing for a little bit right or whatever so you just go grab a drink meet people from around the world or whatever like that it was super yeah. fun but that's pretty um, cool i think that I think too, right. In our, in our line of work, right. Like I was former or whatever like that too, but, um, we spend a lot of our time vacationing to go see family. Right. And you feel obligated to do it because, and it's yeah. a weird thing. Cause you feel like, Oh, I left home. So I need to go back, to, but it's more for them than it is for you. Yeah. Like at, as you go through it for years and years and years, right. I think early on, you kind of want to go home. You miss that. But as you get older as an adult, you got your own family and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to take like a trip, a vacation or do something like just with your own household mm -hmm. and whatever that is. Or or if you're single by yourself or something like that as an, an adult thing or go with your spouse and do something just with them or whatever like that. Because I don't know why, but like I feel like completely refreshed, different thoughts, mindset, yeah, like just to get out of the day to day bustle. And then because I think going back to visit family. Right. And uh, I hope my family's not listening to this, but, <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it's like more work, right? It like you gotta, it, it feels 100%. like more work and it doesn't have to be that way. And it really isn't that way, but it, that's the field that you get as 
you going home, right? Like, oh, I yeah. need to do this, 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 or figure out this and make up for all this lost time of me being gone. But I think taking a trip and going somewhere that you want to go, or even if it's in your own state, right? I've talked to the girls like, yo, let's once every couple months, let's every two months, let's just go somewhere, right? For yeah. a weekend, we'll get off school on Friday. Maybe we go up to Wyoming or we go to Utah, right? Or mm-hmm. something like that. We'll get a hotel, do some stuff, come back on a Sunday just to get out of like the local city, right? Yeah. So that's yeah, just you, top of mind for me. You look rejuvenated. You look uh, dude. You look it good. was so good. Yep. I met a, I met a lot of people too. So I got to sit like five seats away from the chick who played the wife in Sopranos. That's um, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, do you get any new subscribers to the show while you're uh-huh. out there? I, yo, I pitched it to Mello. So Carmelo <laughs> Anthony was at the game. He sit, he's sitting two seats That's away awesome. from her, right? And I got to shake Carmelo ha- Anthony's hand as he was leaving or whatever. Right? I stayed around and he was leaving and. So he was talking to some guy next to him or whatever. I got a picture of him, like literally like me to my computer away from me. It's like a yeah. foot and a half or whatever. And then um, I shook his hand or whatever. It's like, hey, subscribe to the Taco Corp. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just like, what? I was like, ah, oh, just joking. Whatever, right? He just That's laughed. Cool. But I got to see him. I uh, met Pete David. Oh, I didn't meet Pete Davidson. I saw Pete Davidson and whoever his new chick is. I don't know who she is, but she's super attractive. Probably and someone then- famous. Yeah. And, yeah she's famous now at least i don't know if she was before probably story, yeah. yeah but um he'll have another one next week so don't go looking it up by the time this comes out there'll be someone else on his instagram but um but yeah so i um yeah i met a lot of people there i got to see a lot of people madison square garden is the best venue to watch any type of event the acoustics in that place are different i don't know how to explain it the sound mm-hmm. is different um there's something magical about being at mm-hmm. madison square garden that changes everything like mm-hmm. view on sports or whatever like that too like i've been up to you know dodger games and dodger stadium and nothing like madison square garden so yeah i've been to quite a few places uh you know probably like a third of the baseball stadiums uh probably like five or six nba stadiums a couple nfl a bunch of college nothing was like Madison square. Garden. I feel like I basketball is just hurt. different. It's, it's just smaller. Dodger stadium. It's open, obviously 40, yeah. 50,000 capacity, right? Basketball is what? Like 15, 20,000. Yeah. I, don't I think, know. I think just... there it's like 19,000 is max capacity yeah. or something like that. Um, and I don't know, just see, it's like when I, so I went to that Niner Broncos game earlier in the year and I came back and said, yeah, you don't realize how fast the game is until you see it in person. Right. And you're like, yo it's it's a second and a half to two seconds before that ball's got to be gone because things are just collapsing Mm -hmm. but then you think about that same amount of time some dude's 25 yards down the field Mm -hmm. it's wild right and then for them to get like a foot of separation is wide open and Mm -hmm. it's just it's crazy right i was so shocked by how massive james harden is like that dude is a he would play middle linebacker at most universities yeah. and, jo- and Joel and beat. And I saw him from like 10 feet away, warmups, just shooting threes. And he drained every one of them, like 10 straight. <laughs> and I was like, Holy crap, this dude's bad. And then I saw, you see Joel and bead and Joel and beads waste. I was telling Trey's wife this morning, this, whatever, when I dropped off the girls before work and I was like, Joel and beads waist is my shoulder width. <laughs> Like it is massive. Like, I don't think I have a friend who has wider shoulders than Mm -hmm. Joel Embiid's waist and his lower body looks like it's heavier than all of us. Mm -hmm. Like he's just so massive, seven foot tall. But then the dude is like, he's not fast, but he's super quick. Like Mm -hmm. his first step is faster than all of our first steps. And the athleticism that all those dudes have. And when you think about wide open in the NFL being like about a foot, right? you're you're pretty much wide open if you're a foot in front of somebody to have a foot in the nba is wide open too and like them coming off screens understanding how, like the game is actually pretty physical i don't i think it gets basketball gets a bad rap for being like a soft sport or whatever yeah. like that but they're still i mean you can hear bodies clacking right screens and yep. screens and all that stuff and it's i mean grown men just like every ounce of effort they have yeah. into it going nuts and everybody's six foot three you know, or whatever, like the small guy on the court is massive and yeah. it's, it's pretty crazy. It was fun. I would, I don't know. We got to go. We got to go to more games. Like it's just fun. So I'm down. Yeah. Manager on manager. So I got a question for you this week, Tony, the fantasy football season ends this week. We got championship week. 
what's one thing that you think that you've learned? I would say you think that you learned because this <laughs> might change over time, right? Think you learn from this year that you're certain you're going to take into next year. <laughs> God damn it. Um, <laughs> so many. There's so many things. Don't uh, have to go down my roster. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at my Taco Corp roster right now. I got about seven things. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, I looked at this one. I didn't write any notes for it, but I definitely gave it a, a good thought. Um, head coaches, just looking at head coaches going into the season, avoid the new guys, avoid the FNGs. Because, like, yeah, Mike McDaniel, he's had some success with the Dolphins, but like Nathaniel Hackett, come on, man. Mm-hmm. He's like, that is completely derailed. The Russell Wilson season, Sutton, Judy, the running backs there, right? Like, who knows? Javante Williams would have got injured with a different head coach who who used him, right? Melvin Gordon, he got cut from the team. Um, they kind of wasted that defense, too. So there's just so many different aspects. It's just a single guy. Just one mm-hmm. guy who wasn't ready to be a head coach ruined, right? The dude brought in, what, what are you bringing, like a game management dude to, he, to run the he clock bought in for, a, right? He, he, bought, he brought in a guy to run all the head coaching functions. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he eventually, like, handed off play calling. Dude, like, he, dude, who is not ready to be a head mm-hmm. coach? So just, like keying in on that kind of stuff and then maybe tailoring like my uh my player rankings right guys i avoid going into a draft gonna pay a lot more attention to that next season because there's gonna be what like a half a dozen coaches uh fired and new hires right so there'll definitely be some opportunities um we can either focus in on or just avoid altogether and maybe i uh focus on avoiding some of those situations next season yeah i so we've talked about it before about like the quarterback position Right. And how much like you look at every team that's in a championship, nobody has anybody probably other than let's say uh, if you had Lamar Jackson on your team, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Justin Mm -hmm. Herbert, maybe on that fringe um, Tua, maybe on that fringe now a little bit because he missed a couple weeks. But Mm -hmm. those just big top five, six quarterbacks. Right. And how. They're going to go a lot earlier next year. Also, the tight end position, like Travis Kelsey. Yep. Travis Kelsey really should be like the one of one overall until yep. he falls off, right? Because you're just getting 20-something points a week, and you're not going to get that from – you don't get that from any wide receiver, right? Like legitimately, you go into the week and not have to worry about it, right? Yep. You always have to worry about, okay, he's going up against this corner or the quarterback. There's all this other stuff, right? You never have to worry about it with that offense. Um and I think going into next year, their wide receiver is going to be more fluid in it, right? They're going to get more time. Mm-hmm. And you got Tony mm-hmm. coming in a little bit more there. But Travis Kelsey, I think, should be the one of one overall, regardless. But I think what I've learned, right, is that the tide is starting to shift towards that thinking as well, also with the wide receiver position, right? Like, I went pretty deep in your league. I got smoked this week because everybody had their down week in one playoff week i have two raiders yeah. and i have some chiefs and stuff the, like that the studs they 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 all laid eggs this last yeah. week it was bad. so so there's that right but i think i came into the season being like i'm not going everybody's going to be going running back heavy right they want to get their guys their studs because the position is scarce right i went into it of i'll take damian pierce i'll take these brian robinson yep. right or antonio gibson or guys lower on the totem, Josh Jacobs, right? Like one. big value, I felt like, and it turned out really well. Um, Aaron Jones was a little bit later as well in most leagues, third, fourth round-ish or whatever, because mm-hmm. people thought A.J. Dillon was going to take the torch. Uh, didn't happen. But I think that next year you're going to see people go quarterback, wide receiver, or wide receiver heavy to begin it, right? Mm-hmm. Wide receiver, quarterback, tight end to get those things out of the way. And then worry about running back later on. And I think that you're going to end up getting a lot of value at the running back position if you take it earlier, Mm -hmm. right? Like, like wherever people are going to leave there, they're going to say, I don't need the advantage here is where I think I'm going to try to take the advantage next year. So I think I'm going to be more running back, big running back in the first round, maybe the second round too. Right. But I might look at running back tight end or something like that, but Probably in those first four rounds, I'm going to have both my running backs and I'm going to piece it together with wide receiver, mm-hmm. I believe. I think that you're getting a lot of more wide receivers that uh, come out of college a lot more ready, right? You got these guys, if you look at a uh, YouTube channel like Destroying, right? They, they're they doing these one-on-one drills all the time, yeah. right? All year round, and it's for content purposes. But what it's doing is they're getting reps all, all year, 
right? Because in the off season, it's like, I'm gonna go to the seven on seven camp. Oh, by the way, I want to go to this one because it's on YouTube. And I, the one that's on YouTube is going to have the best dudes in the country at it, right? So these wide receivers, like you look at Jamar Chase, uh, Justin Jefferson, uh, Garrett, right? Uh, Garrett Wilson out of the New York Jets. Like, yep. Yes, there's a quarterback problem there, but the dude balls out. Like all these He's wide good. receivers come in really so good. much better out of college now because now the college game is translating a lot more to the NFL from like a wide receiver quarterback standpoint of slinging the ball, right? You're not as balanced as we used to be or anything like that. So I think that there's such an advantage at the wide receiver position that I can wait on that a little bit longer and grab more value yeah. guys at that end, which, which is what I think I'm taking into it. So, and I think that goes into my next, like, maybe we'll talk about this in the off season, but I think, I think the years of, your quarterback needing to be on a rookie contract or over because you can save the money at the wide receiver position at the running back position. You don't have to pay those guys. You can get guys out of college that are going to perform yeah. at those positions. Right. So all of your star positions, you could have youth and then go pay the money for Patrick Mahomes, pay it for Lamar Jackson, pay up Derek Carr, right? Like seasoned quarterbacks, I think are going to play a bigger role in winning Super Bowls going forward, as opposed to this formula of you got to build the team around it and then get the rookie quarterback, stick them yeah. in because these rookie quarterbacks cannot comprehend. We've been spoiled for like two years, but they can't comprehend NFL defenses, right? And complex schemes and all that kind of stuff. And are you going to wait two years and then hope that your team wants to stay together because you built it? Like, mm -hmm. Like, it's going to be hard, man. Like, if Joe Burrows might be the best quarterback in the league, right? Right now, like, Patrick Mahomes is up there. I think Joe Burrow is better than Josh Allen. I'd take Joe Burrow as a quarterback over Josh Allen. The only competition I think you really have is Patrick Mahomes. But a guy like Joe Burrow getting to the Super Bowl is completely abnormal. They're balling out. But he might just be one of the next generational dudes. Like, I think he, legit, I think he is. legit dude right like yeah. he competes his team shouldn't be this good and it's because of him right they have players or whatever but it is because of him and i think yeah. that you're going to be able to pay for guys like that uh going forward and save at all the other positions i agree i agree with the take <clears throat> yep on all counts w w question for me all right <clears throat> you're the president of the united states of america what's your first order of business and this could be an executive order Jesus. could be a tweet um a letter to Congress, which, which you got, I have something. I am going to tweet from the POTUS account. Um, be sure to go listen to the talk core fantasy football league podcast on all platforms. Uh, subscribe to that YouTube, hit the notification bell. So you always get notified when we drop a new video. <laughs> that, Instantly. That's, that's going to be it. That is it. Like, 100 million views. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The, I'm going global with it, right? Everyone, what the hell? Some that's good. Some some little kid named Mowgli out in a foreign land living in a rainforest is going to be like, what the hell is a taco court pod? And he's going to mm -hmm. listen to this thing. He's like, well, the president of the United States is listening to that. I don't yep. listen to it, right? Yeah, that, he gets his friend Baloo to also subscribe. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, you just look, look, guys, we life's become too complicated. There's too much out there, right? Bare necessities, taco court pod. <laughs> it's good yeah. this is good what would you do for me i'm stripping i'm stripping the houston astros of the 2017 world series and i'm giving it to the dodgers the mm. rightful owners i'm also this is maybe a two-parter maybe three-parter let's go I'm let's go back jose here. altuve oh i'm banning carlos correa for however long they were found cheating it's mm. got to be like a year or two right at least that they were doing this i don't recall mm -hmm. off the top of my head but those three things executive orders what i'm pretty sure congress would be in on it. we could probably pass some legislation so let's go. Yeah. I think that I would also put a ban on the Los Angeles Dodgers for not cheating enough in two years in a row and losing to a cheating Boston Red Sox team yeah, and a Cora. cheating Houston Astros, yeah. Astros team. The Dodgers need punishment too. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Right. After the Astros good. thing, you knew they were still in your signs. You couldn't step up your game against the, the Sox. They smoked yeah. them though. That wasn't even close. Yeah. At least the Astros won. That was like game seven. Back and forth, right? Like mm -hmm. they they won the game, they won the series. What in like the fifth fifth inning, fourth inning, or something like that? Mm -hmm. So like, the cheating definitely had an impact on yeah. the outcome of that series. So yeah. yeah, that's going to LA. There we go. Oh, all right. Let's move on to news and notes. 
Fantasy football championship this week, Tony. Are you nope. in it? Nope. Am nope. I in it? Nope. Nope. Do we care about this thing? Nope. Nope. Next. Next. Topic. <laughs> next topic. Uh, banger of the week. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, we're gonna have our first three-time champion here in Taco Court Fantasy Football League, and I hate it because I was the first two-time champion, and I've been on a drought for a very long time. But we got Brandon's too hot to handle going up against the Pocket Dogs this year. Brandon was one of the league leaders in the league, all the way at the top of the standings. Being like, oh, man, this team's pretty dope. He might win it. Ended up going on like a big losing skid to end the season. Gets into the playoffs off a tiebreaker on points. Is the sixth seed. James and the Pocket Dogs are the one seed. Who do you got winning their third Taco Court Fantasy Football League Championship? Tony. I think somehow – Brandon made it through with Devonte Adams on his team, mm-hmm. um, and he put up 190 points last. He week. almost hit 200. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Uh, I think Brandon is going to take this. Um, he's got decent running backs, right? I know Chubb's a little banged up. He's got Kamara. You're going to get good volume out of those guys. Kirk Cousins playing Green Bay. There's going to be a lot of points scored there. Um, Devonte Adams should get a lot of targets. I don't know what Derek Carr's problem has been, but Stidham's going to need to throw it to somebody, and they're going to mm-hmm. lose that game by a lot. I have an ATS uh, for later that we're doing. We He's go. got Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith, and he, he made a great move. Um, he picked up Dobbs because I think Watson might be missing this game. So, like, he covered himself there. And if I was James, I would have been all over that. But maybe I didn't see what, like, the fab situation was. So yeah. I just like his team a little better. On on uh, James' side, he has, like, Zay Jones and Evan Ingram. Maybe a little too heavily invested in Put the Jaguars who are playing Houston. Well, I like him. Yeah. But if they win that game, it doesn't matter. They're still playing for the division in week 18. Like, I think Tennessee's sitting Derrick Henry, right? Yeah. And it's Houston. Like, I don't think they uh, are a very good matchup for wide receivers. I yeah. don't have the the stats up in front of me, but I think they're like the bottom five. Yeah, they're a wide run against team. Yeah, for sure. And then running back, he's got – Connor's been great. Latavius Murray, don't like that. DK Metcalf playing the Jets, mm, I don't like that either. Kenneth Walker playing the Jets, don't like that. So, it's going to be tough for James. I think it's going to be an ugly matchup, though. He's Brandon's not getting to 200 points this week. Yeah. The interesting thing too, right. I was going to send these guys a message today and be like, Hey, um, cause I was like, if there's no Monday night matchup for them, we can record the post championship episode on a Monday. Mm-hmm. Right. And it gives me a day to edit or whatever like that. Um, but James has Monday night in a very important AFC champion, AFC standings yes. match up right he's got joe burrow going up against the buffalo bills and the Bengals are still in contention for the number one overall seed in the afc right now like they need some stuff to happen to the chiefs right and they need to win out but they could be the number one overall they can clinch the division here pretty soon i think they just need to win one game and then they play baltimore next week they're game up so they're definitely playing for the division and yeah they're a game behind for the uh the bye week the first right round. after New Year's, you know, your Monday night football against the Buffalo Bills, who everybody's like, they're still the Super Bowl favorite, the Buffalo Bills, I believe. Um, they were the Super Bowl favorite coming into it. Everybody rode off the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals have gone on the road and beaten the crap out of the Chiefs twice, once in the playoffs, once this year as well. Yep. I think they have a chip on their shoulder. If he's down 30 points going into Monday night football, Monday night football, not over not over right and i was thinking about it before we recorded this like what if it would be fucking great right one for monday night football but also for our league championship right the there's something about being the first of something in this league right so like i hold on to being the first two-time champion i was pissed when brandon won his second one and i was pissed when james won his second one james can go be the first back-to-back champion because he won it last year and also be the first three-time champion. Joe Burrow's got the ball at the 10-yard line, a minute 20 left mm-hmm. in the game, no timeouts. James is down nine, so he gets the three points for the over 75 yards, six points for a touchdown, right? The fractional stuff gets him over the, over the hump. It would be perfect for it yeah. all, right? <clears throat> Brandon's had, had an interesting year this year. Right, whether that's in fantasy football, whether that's in regular life, whether that's in work, moving jobs, whether that's trying to get promoted, whether that's whatever, right? It would just be perfect to just shit on all of it and just say, you know what? Welcome to the new year. 
It's the same old shit. Yeah. I want to see I want to see James win it. James is really good at trash talking. He's good at coming up with punishments. Like me going in that freezing ass water last year sucked. Yeah. Um we drove two hours for me to we jump did. into a fucking freezing stream. And yeah, we <laughs> wandered around the whole damn lake trying to find a spot that we wasn't almost frozen. we almost died getting hit by a bull. <laughs> like oh I mean, shit, I forgot about that. A foot horn. 12 inch horns on this thing. And I'm driving yeah. a red truck through an area that we're not supposed to be driving through. There's a bunch of cattle trying to find an opening in a fence. You almost got impaled. I remember that. And it is, and it is swampy water. Cause it's next to the lake. So it's like, I'm in four wheel, but I can't punch it. Cause yeah. I might get stuck. And you were sitting shotgun and almost got impaled <laughs> with a foot long <laughs> horn to the side of the truck. So yeah. I could do a punishment. That was pretty good. Right. The story is really good. Um, yeah, I want to see James win it. I think that would be good. Um, he's also pretty quiet in the league. He is. And I think does that's he, because does he listen? Does he listen to the show? I'm sure he listens to the show. So I would like to give him some props. Um, not sure if people know his roster, but his first round draft pick has been on the IR since about mid season, mm-hmm. and he is in the championship. So well done, mm-hmm. James. Pat yourself on the back. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Cooper Cup Let's, on the IR. <clears throat> Let's get off the fucking championship talk because that nobody gives a damn about. Everybody's here for the sack of punishment. Tony, you escaped it last week and you got yourself a victory. So there are two teams left with no wins (laughs) in the loser's bracket. Therefore, one team will finish with no wins and be the Sacco this year and will get punished. One of those is the IR team. I can't count how many guys he has in the IR, how many losses he has, how many wins he has, or he doesn't have. And that's Chad going up against, I shaved my balls for this and Trey, who ends up with the Sacco this year? And maybe who do you want to have the Sacco this year? Can we change away from the team quarterback right now? Because if you change away from team quarterback, I will go pick up every other starting quarterback for my team, and he won't have a quarterback. Can you do that? Can we? Hmm? This, we're post COVID. COVID's over, Nate. No, we, we, I mean you could drop the rest of your roster. So this and pick is, them up. I'm getting I'm getting down a rabbit hole. We need to do away with team quarterback. No, it's not fair. No, when team quarterback is you're the a way quarterback to go. when Tua gets injured, but Teddy comes in and he's like comparable. He can still put up 15, mm-hmm. 20 points. But your running back, your wide receiver, Kelsey goes down. You don't get any points. Like you don't have any other of those players on your team more than likely. With with concussion protocol the way that it is, players are going to get pulled all the time, right? And the way that Tua keeps getting concussions, which I really don't want to talk about because everybody's yeah. beat it to a dead, you yeah, know, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Um, we're going to see more and more and more of that going forward. That's and any position, honestly, though. no. Uh, it's more so at the quarterback position and we'll never go away from team quarterback. I've already decided that it is the way it is the way to to go forward. It is way to go. Brandon cooks begs to differ. Who's Brandon gets like two a year. Who's Brandon cooks. Oh, wide receiver. Wide receiver. Yeah. Texans. Yeah. Texans. I forgot that he plays football still. He plays on the Too many concussions. Too many concussions. Yeah. 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 No, no. It's the only position where you're, completely dependent on them being active or not and yeah no we're not doing that well that's my second act as president getting rid of team quarterbacks no, no third that's my third act second act changing <laughs> changing your you know what's rules. funny you know what's funny is um it was not this last week but two weeks ago there's a fantasy analyst named jeff mans he runs like fantasy guru.com now or whatever like that he's been serious xm for like 12 years whatever yeah he's a guy who got I he's the one that I really started to learn like okay coaches matter schemes matter offensive lines matter more than mm-hmm. the plug and play players right um and he put out a podcast 2 weeks ago and it was it was it felt so good cuz he came back like one of his things was like the wave of the future for fantasy football we all need to do team quarterback and I was like yes We've been doing it for three years or whatever. It is. This is no. a third season with it. Yeah. COVID, third COVID was the first year. Yeah. Yeah. So 2020. Right. So, yeah, I, I was just like, oh, I feel validated. So maybe that's why my skin glows a little bit more. I have not been exercising. So, <laughs> but who, 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 who do you got here? I have, the, I'm looking at the matchup. Trey's been putting up like 60 points a week. It's not. <laughs> Not good. Uh, his his team is all waiver wire. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I would never have those guys. He's got McKenzie going. He's got Shahid going. Dobbins <laughs> is back. He's okay. Andrews, 
disappointing year, right? You got mm-hmm. Tyler Huntley still throwing the ball. Um, I guess with Garrett Wilson, you get a bump because Mike White's back. Uh, Stevenson's banged up. Austin Eckler might not play. Not sure about that. They locked up a playoff spot. They don't need him to beat the Rams, so they might rest him. Uh, Justin Herbert's going against the Rams again. I think they'll smoke him. I know the Rams put a 50 on Denver, but Denver, that was a meltdown, right? That was Hackett putting in like a resignation letter or the team doing it on his behalf, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think, I think, uh, Trey's got the better shot. He's got the the inside uh, lane on the Sacco for this one. What, what, off the top of your dome, what would Trey's punishment be if you won? I don't know. I think, I don't know if James has listened to some of the back and forth between Wayne and uh, Trey on the bear crawl race, but you got to make Trey bear crawl race somebody. Mm-hmm. Maybe in like a Speedo. I don't know. Make it embarrassing or something. <clears throat> That's all I can think of off the top of the head. Trey's got to do... I've been wanting to see that race for that. Cause that race is, I think needs to happen. It's supposed to happen or something yeah. next time Wayne's in town. I can't, I don't recall. You think Wayne just veers like to the left the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's so fucked up. <laughs> but it's so good. Uh, love you, Wayne. You're one of my best friends. We haven't talked in a while, but. I really yeah, appreciate Wayne, you. Rest in peace. Uh, Wayne couldn't be here with us today. Yeah, he couldn't be here with us today. He's not dead. I, He's just in Virginia. The bear crawl thing is good because Trey was so confident in his bear crawl ability, right? Like, yes. Like, he has – let's say Trey has to bear crawl – I want to say a mile, right? Do a mile bear crawl, whatever like that. That seems like it would suck, at, right? At, like, but, peak hours at the Peterson track in front of everybody doing cardio. And yeah, we invite, yeah, yeah, and we invite yeah. people out, right, to watch it. Yeah. Observe. Yeah, that'd be yeah. good. Yeah, a mile bear crawl. I want to say a 5K just because like <laughs> oh, the 5K Jesus. is like the standard, like, oh, we're going to go run today. Okay, I'm going to run a 5K or yeah, something yeah. like that, right? But that that seems like it would take for fucking ever. But yeah, a mile bear crawl would be really good around a if, track. If that's what you're doing, uh, James, Peterson's gym, like they have a cardio room. I don't know, 40 pieces of equipment, like just mm-hmm. look straight at the track. <clears throat> So if he does this thing like right after work, like five o'clock, five thirty, like <laughs> there's gonna be forty people watching him, maybe yeah. fifty, because that's too deep in the yeah. cardio room. That would be so good. Yeah. And he's like, uh, like you know, he's he's moved up the ranks pretty quickly too. So a lot of people would know who he is. That'd be good. yeah, yeah. I think that Trey ends up getting it too. So it'd be fun. Or or just make him gain like thirty pounds and he he's not allowed to lose it, right? <laughs> something like that like what's your current weight okay you have to gain this you have to by the start of football season you have to be at 25 percent body fat oh jesus <laughs> something like that right like oh that'd be so good i think trace mentioned like there's like a 300 pound man waiting to get out mm. so I, he'd probably be able to do that pretty easily i think that would get him to quit the league like hey you got to be at 20 27 body fat <laughs> Like you take all the body fat percentages of the entire league, average it out, and then that's what Trey has to get to. Twenty five might be on the low end. So I, know. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But all right, let's move on. Um, the Los Angeles Chargers you talked about earlier have clinched the playoff berth yeah. after their win over the Colts on Monday Night Football. I watched this in the airport. It was kind of cringe because I had to listen to Joe Buck and Troy Aikman through the speakers of the airport. Yeah. Um, but is it finally time for them to make a run in the playoffs? And if so, how far do you think they go? Fool me once. Shame on me. Fool me twice. Shame. I can't be fooled, Nate. <laughs> First round loss. They're, they're making the playoffs. Obviously, they clinched it. But the defense, they've played admirably the last mm-hmm. couple of weeks. But I, I don't trust that in the playoffs uh, against the powerhouses of the AFC. So I think they lose in the first round. I think their coaching gets in the way a little bit in that moment, right? Like they 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 got to the playoffs this year after they should have been in the playoffs last year. And it was a mm-hmm. coaching thing. Coaching's got a little bit better. Um, Herbert's got more comfortable. They're a completely different team when they have Keenan Allen and Mike Williams on the field. Mm-hmm. Like it's so much better, but I think that a pucker factor comes in that first playoff game. Cause they're going to have to play one of the top seeds. Right. So yep. they're going to end up having to play Kansas city. They're going to have to play Buffalo or like Cincinnati. No, thank you. I'll take yeah. all those teams over them without all, even looking at the matchups. Yeah. All on the road, all outdoor as well too. Right. In January. So yeah. Pass. Uh, yeah. Um, but I think it's good for their future. I think it, I think you're seeing Herbert become the dude that everybody thought he was going to be. Maybe I sold his sports cards a little too early. I don't know. Market's kind of down like 30%, so maybe I got what I could. But yeah, let's move on from there. Things keep going their way with everyone else around the league. And the Green Bay Packers keep on winning. 
They're currently a half game out of a playoff berth. Do they make it in? We no. we're we're jinxing all these teams. We talked about I know, right? <laughs> the Lions going and be like, okay. but we did talk on your show about when we picked that game, right? The Detroit at Carolina. And it was like this feels like a trap, doesn't it? And we both picked Detroit. Yeah, or we, like two yeah. dude, that game was crazy. They had two 100 yard rushers. Yeah, in the first half, it was nuts. It was nuts <laughs> in the first half. I was over crazy. here trying to look at all Amon Ra stats and see if he. I was like, wait no. a minute. It's like he 30 threw everything to 14. To, who was the tight end? Like Zilstra or Zilstra? Or yeah, something like that? some crazy Zilstra? dude. Yeah. I was three, like, I don't even. Touchdowns. We're going to have to do that for a spelling bee next year. Spell that dude's name because oh, Jared Jesus. Goff likes him, apparently. So, yeah, yeah. that's wrong. Uh, no, I don't think Green Bay makes the playoffs. Um, they need, I think, the Commanders to lose mm-hmm. one of two, and they need the Giants to lose out, and they have to win out. So it can't happen. Um, they've had like a, a rabbit's foot shoved up their ass. Aaron Rodgers has. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Everything's been going their way, though. But I think uh, they either lose one of the next two or the commanders win out. I know that they have Dallas. The commanders do in week 18, but they might not be playing for anything. So they might be resting Pollard, Zeke, Dak, you know, their stars on yeah. both sides of the ball. But uh, the commanders have Cleveland this week. I think they beat Cleveland. It's at home for Washington. So I think one of those things is going to go wrong for me. But even if they win out, I think Washington also wins out with their schedule. Yeah, I think so, too. The Chicago Bears and San Francisco 49ers were both three and four at one point of this season. The Niners haven't lost since then, and the <laughs> Bears haven't won since then, sitting at 11 and four and three and 12, respectively. If you're Mike Shanahan, right? Because we're talking Kyle. about the legend. We're talking. Well, yeah, it's Kyle, the coach. Mike's there as like a consultant, probably. A consultant, right? For sure. That's, uh, definitely. I definitely put that in wrong. My bad. But <laughs> Kyle Shanahan, right? Because we're talking about the legend. He's, of well, hold on. He, he, he's got mm-hmm. like a, a conscience thing like going, right? He's got like Mike, his dad on one shoulder, and then he's got like Jay Gruden on the other, I think. I or think that's like, what you're going for. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely what I was going for. That or like Mike Singletary. He's not part of the tree, but he was there before, Ooh, that's right? that's good. We're talking about winners, you know, or whatever <laughs> like that. Uh, but if you're Kyle Shanahan, bringing up the legend of Brock Purdy right now, mm. I mean, he's the first quarterback since Dan Marino in his first three starts to – to do what he's done, throw for over 200 yards, two mm-hmm. touchdowns a game, right, and be undefeated. I mean, the guy's basically Dan Marino. That's what we're looking <laughs> at right now. Um, and Jimmy Garoppolo gets healthy enough to start in a playoff mm-hmm. game. Who are you starting? If you are Kyle Shanahan or you just give truth serum to Kyle Shanahan, who's he going to want to start, Jimmy G or Brock Purdy? You mentioned the Bears earlier. If they had Justin Fields, he starts hands down over both those guys. You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh i don't know how well does jimmy g or brock purdy play uh throw into Nikhil harry equinemia st brown byron pringle like you put fields in that offense that's a super bowl easy dynasty they're winning three of four and eight the he's throwing to a white running back i was just trying to trigger you uh to answer your question <laughs> I think he's. I think you stick with Brock Purdy, and then you know you have Jimmy G, right, to fall back on mm-hmm. if the lights are too bright uh, for the kids. So, so far they've been pretty similar. I saw a tweet from Ian Harditz. I'll give the man his his credit because he did the stats here. Dudes from PFF. So passing grade for both of those guys, uh, Jimmy G and Brock Purdy, sixty nine. Nice. nice. Yep. Yep. Passer rating for both of those guys, one hundred three. They're within a tenth of each mm-hmm. other. Yards per attempt, identical. They're at seven point nine. Completion percentage. 67.2 for Brock Purdy, a little better than Jimmy G, who's at 67.1. The guys are like carbon copies of each other. Yeah. So I don't I don't one, think it matters which one plays. You have you just put them whichever one's starting, whether it's Jimmy G or Brock Purdy, you got them on a short leash and they're in the same offense and they're capable of doing the same thing. So they're in a good is, spot, I think. This is like uh uh this is going to be one of those uh Jalen Hurts is the quarterback for like the first half and then Tua Tagovailoa Alabama. comes in in the second half. Alabama's yeah. just like, oh, we're down 30. Let's go. Jimmy yeah. G brings the boys back, wins the Super Bowl, and then Brock Purdy goes to Oklahoma. They don't even have a team there anymore. <laughs> but, <man. laughs> yeah. yeah. Very, very, I, very similar. I don't think it matters. I'd stop Brock Purdy. I think you got the team behind him right now, right? You got some hype. Um, you got the defense. He's just more mobile. That's the thing, right? Like, And that's yeah. what I would want in the playoffs when you're going to be facing Philly, who's got – a front four that's nasty. You might be facing Dallas, who's got one of the better front fours in all of football. 
yeah. right? And then you don't have to worry about the rest of the NFC because they're all trash. <laughs> but um, And you really don't have to worry about the rest of the AFC. I mean, Cincinnati's D-line's doing all right, but you're not getting Von Miller out of Buffalo, right? Anything like that. The yeah. Kansas City Chiefs don't have a pass rush that's going to scare you. So. They're going to beat the living shit out of each other. The AFC is. Yeah, that's like, going to be nice. By the time you get to February, like, goddamn, you, like, who knows? Like, look what the Bills did to the Rams. Yeah. Like, we were already, we went into week one, the Rams did with, like, injuries on the offensive line. Like, that mm-hmm. has just, like, snowballed into what yeah. it is now where we don't think we have any of our starters in no. there here in week 17. And that was because of the start we had with Buffalo. So imagine what those teams are going to do to each other in the playoffs where like yeah. every down they're going to be playing hundred percent. Right. I wonder if that's what ended up happening last year to the AFC, right? The AFC was pretty damn strong. Yeah. Um, and the Rams were basically the only AFC, NFC team that people were really, really worried about yeah. maybe the Niners too. Right. But they got eliminated. So um, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Overrated, underrated. <clears throat> this is getting into our draft later on. Right. So, uh, this last week, we had a wide receiver from the Philadelphia Eagles go and be the Grinch in Dallas. And he yep. goes and goes up like he's going to jump into the Salvation Army bin, puts on a mask, and then steals all the presents out of there, right? It's pretty pretty comical. So we're going to be good. talking about celebrations here later on. But overrated, underrated, big defensive play celebrations. Underrated. Ooh. Uh, overrated, underrated. First down celebrations. For the opposite reason, I think they're overrated. Yeah, they're terrible. Like, yeah. Who gives a shit? Get back in the huddle. Yeah. Overrated. Like, I always like seeing a delay of game penalty right after a first down <laughs> celebration. <laughs> you spent 30 <laughs> seconds celebrating. This yeah. Fault. Yeah. He couldn't get the play. He's in the wrong side of the field. Oh, shit. Get to the other side of the field. Oh, damn. Yeah. You're the motion guy. You don't know your emotion. Yeah. Fucking timeout or something like that. It's so good. And then overrated, underrated, touchdown celebration. Underrated. Easy. Underrated. So? Yes. I. I think that touchdown celebrations now are getting overrated. Uh, I think that they were underrated before, but since the league said you guys can do like team celebrations and all this kind of stuff, right? I don't like all the like super choreographed things that like, Hey, come on guys, get together. Let's roll the boat or whatever like that, or do something crazy. Um, And then everybody just does like the same dance, right. Or whatever. Um, This is entertainment. Like, I know they're playing a sport, but it's entertainment for us, for the viewers. And like for touchdowns, what three, four, maybe five happen every game. Like celebrate it, go have fun. I love seeing the robo. That that shit's hilarious. I think that they, in order for touchdown celebrations to be really good, they need to allow taunting. I don't. I they need trash talk. Taunting. And more than more than three pelvic thrusts, or more than two pelvic thrusts. Yes, yes. So I think yes, that in the yes. Kringle Bear, you throw the flag after the second one, right? Or after yeah, the third one. No. Like you need to be able to talk shit, right? Like I watched. So like Christmas Day, I came back from the game. It was like three o'clock or whatever, like that. I grabbed some food because yeah. nothing really closes in New York because half those people don't celebrate Christmas. So it's kind of nice that things are open, delis or whatever. Yeah. And I started watching basketball games, and I fell asleep, and then I woke up during the Warriors and Grizzly game. Mm-hmm. Right. And John Morant's talking all this trash about how he's not worried about anybody in the West, whatever. They're down Steph Curry. And then Jordan Poole goes for like the most points in the first quarter by like a whatever. And then uh, Christmas Day or something like that. And then the whole time, like there was technicals given out for taunting. Jordan Poole got ejected for talking shit in the game. Right. And he was the top scorer. Clay Thompson gets a technical because he does something and then he just like looks down at the dude who fell and he's like talking shit right it's awesome like that brings so much energy to stadiums and arenas and stuff allow it in football allow the trash talk or whatever and you just got to tell the other dudes you guys got to take it or it lasts a certain amount of time whatever it is and get back right or whatever like that because you need to be able to shit on other humans and i think that's what (laughs) we're going to get to not actually take a shit right we're not seattle seahawks around here a free co- it's a free country. I mean, <laughs> I, I agree with you. And the NFL is the worst about it. Like, I don't know. It's, they're who's terrible. On the, I don't know who's on like a competition committee who determines that, but like Tyreek can't even do the peace sign as he's yeah. like walking away from people. Right. Yeah. Catching like do a you, 70 yard bombs. Like what? He's just saying peace. Like I'm out. You know I, how I many touchdowns Deion Sanders would not have. Oh, doing the high step. Yep. Doing the high step yep. from 40 yards away. Cause he's so far in front of everybody. He just starts celebrating. They would all be flags. Yeah. 
Do you want to see that, or do you want to see the dude high step down the damn field? I want to see the fucking high step. I want he to see signed the trash well. Talk. He's high stepping, hundred yeah. percent. I want to see shit like that. It's crazy. Three bets against the spread, Tony. What do you got? Uh, first one. <laughs> this one has changed when I uh, type this up. Yeah, it a lot lower. For me too. <laughs> a lot lower. Uh, 49ers against the Raiders. It was at five and a half. Um, mm-hmm. May have put some money on that. It's now yeah. at ten. Also put some money on that. And David <laughs> uh, Richter, and he's in one of our other leagues. If you guys don't know him, uh, he's in our betting chat. But he's like, I, I, uh, I bought some points. I'm up to thirteen point five. I was like, All right, I'll do that too. That's two touchdowns. Give me that against the yeah. Raiders. Yeah, that's the first one I got. Yeah, uh, I have. I'll just say I have that one too. Uh, I'm not going to put it on there because I have a couple other ones. Okay, but I have that one written as too. I think that the Las Las Vegas Raiders are just going to quit as a team. How do you bring in Devonte Adams to be with Derek Carr, right? Mm-hmm. And and this is an ownership thing, right? It's to preserve him from getting an injury because then his contract's not guaranteed. Like he, he he misses out on a bunch of guaranteed money if he gets like if he gets injured, he gets guaranteed money or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. So they're trying to get him for next year, but you just lost the entire team by doing yeah. this, right? To save a, a few million bucks or whatever like that on the potential of some millions of bucks, right? Mm-hmm. But so I get the business decision behind it, but Derek Carr is not going to be there next year. I don't think, nope. I don't think they're going to pay him. Right. And we'll, we'll do another it, episode well, where we. <clears throat> his contract's not guaranteed. That? So no, he's not going to be there. His contract's yeah. not guaranteed for next year. He's not going to be there. So he won't be there. And it makes no sense. Cause you brought in Devonta Adams. You're th- it's not like the rest of your team is like super solid and you need to save some money, add a player mm-hmm. and you're good. Right. Like, Oh, we got to two big, uh, you know, a safety, a lockdown corner or an edge guy to go, you know, with the homeboy we talked about before. Um, but it's not like you're like a piece away and then you can mm-hmm. just build around a rookie quarterback Several or something pieces. like that. Like you're, you're so far away and you just sold the team on having Devonte Adams back with Derek Carr and Devonte Adams played damn well, right? Over a thousand yeah. yards. Probably, he probably could have been over 100 catches on the season, double digit touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's been great. You've seen Josh Jacobs come through, whatever. So you you know your running game's good. You got a rookie running back there. You're gonna let Jacobs walk because you're not gonna pay him or whatever like yeah. that. But you're also playing a rival in the 49ers for years and years and years. This was one of the biggest games when both of these teams sucked. When it's yeah. like Battle of the Bay. Oakland versus San Francisco. Like people would go to hospitals over this game. And it's right after New Year's, right? So people were, people sat there. And I thought about this before because I was in Las Vegas over the summer for work or whatever like that. And I looked at the schedule and I was like, the Raiders play the Niners New Year's weekend. This would be dope. I was talking to Terrence when we were together out there. And I was like, this would be a dope game to come to or whatever like mm-hmm. that, right? Devontae Adams is here, all this kind of shit, all this kind of stuff, right? And so you got people who went and took a, are taking a vacation for New Year's in Las Vegas solely based on going to see the Niners and the Raiders play. And they're Raider fans. Mm-hmm. They're talking now that the stadium's going to be 65 to 70% Niner fans because of the amount of sale tickets that went up for sale after they benched Derek Carr. Like Raider fans love this dude and they should love this dude. He's great. And you just said, you know, we're not playing for anything this year, but this is our big game. And by the way, we don't give a shit, right? Yeah. Like your fan base is done. Your team's done. I think they're going to quit. I think they blow them out. Anyways, my first pick off the board is going to be Cincy plus one and a half at home Monday night football against the Buffalo Bills. Cincinnati is the team and they just yep. keep doing it. They keep getting written off. The Bills should not be a favorite here whatsoever. I think it should be Cincinnati one and a half and it's not. It's ridiculous. It's ludicrous. Yeah. I don't care. They're going to beat the Buffalo Bills. All right. Uh, I'm taking a step back here. I had 114 yards, no touchdowns uh, for Devontae Adams. What do you think that is? His his stats from last week? His stats for the last two weeks combined? What do you think that is? 114 uh, and no touchdowns. Let's go. He had a good week. Uh, let's go three weeks. That is combined his last. He hasn't had a combined last three weeks. He hasn't had double-digit targets since week 13. Yeah. That's not acceptable. And he has Who, seven seven he, weeks this season under ten targets. Does it mean that the does this mean that the Raiders just pick the coach over the quarterback? Uh, yeah, I mean he's definitely McDaniel's is definitely getting another year there at least. Which 
He's not. Who are they going to? Are they just I like? Are they just in the Lamar sweepstakes now or something like? That? I don't know what they're doing, but it could be. Let's save that for another one. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, moving on. Sorry, I just, I found that stat interesting. Adams mm-hmm. burned me in a couple leagues. I was in the playoffs in a couple leagues with him and Diggs and AJ Brown and all those guys have just been laying eggs. But whatever, yeah. it's fantasy football. That's kind of how it goes. Uh, my mm-hmm. second one: the Giants minus five against the Colts. Um, Matt Ryan, Nick Foles, Sam Ellinger. It doesn't really matter. I think it's another team that's kind of done this season. Mm-hmm. So, yep, yep, yep. Giants are also um, fighting to stay in the playoffs too, so like they're playing for something. Yeah, I think they cover uh, five. There you go. Um, I'm gonna do it, and the line is not moving in my direction. It's juiced the other way, but I'm gonna take Minnesota plus three at Green Bay. Hmm. Um, Minnesota plus three at Green Bay. Green Bay is juiced minus three at one. 22 now mm-hmm. so it's moving it's going to hit three and a half so maybe you wait a little bit mm-hmm. but i would expect money to come i think that when you get to saturday night money's going to come in on minnesota and this thing's going to drop to like two and a half or something like that so i'm going to take the three um but i don't think green bay's that good mm-hmm. and minnesota just keeps winning right like they're a pretty good team uh they win close games they win games that they should win they win games that they probably shouldn't win and what better way to do it than against a rival in the division, right? Hey, you were the team that used to be this thing, and for years and years and years and years, and you guys are trying to make a playoff run? Yeah. Let's end it today. And I think that they show out. It's going to be cold, and it's outside. It's Kirk Cousins. I get it, right? But uh, but I think that they have more than what Green Bay has to offer. Yeah, and Green Bay should have lost last week. Uh, yep. Tua was tearing him up in the first half, and then he got concussed, and then he went on to throw three picks, three interceptions, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I think without that happening, Green Bay loses that game pretty easily. Yep. <clears throat> that's a good one, though. I like it. Uh, that's also the game I, I would circle on the schedule is them losing Green Bay to end their playoff run. Um, my third one, the Chargers are minus 6.5, so just under a touchdown against the Rams. Denver collapsed last week. I mentioned that earlier. L.A. put up 50 somehow. The Rams did. Uh, mm-hmm. The Chargers have the number two ranked defense since week 12. That'll be a problem for the Rams, who have really nobody but Tyler Higby. Mm-hmm. Uh, on offense, Cam Akers look good, but again, Denver gave up. So give me the Chargers. Six and a half. Six and a half. After mentioning that they might end up sitting half their team. Yep, still taking it. Old. I like it though. All right, I have two other ones here, and <sighs> if if this feels like recency bias, but it's not because they beat this shit out of this team earlier in the year. But give me Carolina plus three at Tampa Bay. Uh, Tampa Bay is in that hunt to win a division as well, Mm -hmm. right? And I don't think that they're better than the Carolina Panthers. Um, They struggle. They can't pass the ball to Mike Evans because Tom Brady has the most interceptions throwing to one receiver this year. Like that combo of throwing it to somebody has more thrown to Mike Evans than anybody else in the league. It's almost like – and you watch some of them, and they're like so bad, yeah, you know, or whatever like that. So – all right, well, you're going to do key out on Chris Godwin, you know, something like that. But um, they have the running game, and the way to beat Tampa Bay Buccaneers is to run the hell out of the ball and pound it down their throats. Yeah. And that's what Carolina can do. Um, so I'm going to take Carolina. I think the line should be around one, Tampa one. So I'll take the three because um, I don't think that Tampa could beat anybody by three. So yeah, they, they're having trouble scoring points. Yeah. Uh, Detroit was like a top five uh, run stopping team going into that matchup against Carolina over the last like five weeks. So recent, like a trend for them, Tampa mm-hmm. Bay is like middle of the pack. Yeah. So if Carolina is able to, to replicate that, like they're going to run all over Tampa Bay. Yep. 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 That's my last one. I- all right. So let's recap them. So Tony, you got the Niners minus 10 <laughs> up to 13 and a half, <laughs> the giants minus five and the chargers six and a half. I'm taking Cincinnati plus one and a half. I got all dogs here. Cincy plus one and a half, Minnesota plus three, Carolina plus three. I think all three teams win. I might do a little round robin skis Good. or 100%. a little little parlay action. We don't parlay around here. Never parlay. It's a bad thing. <laughs> Let's get into our draft. So earlier we brought up in our overrated, underrated biggest celebrations, what we thought about them and all that kind of stuff, right? So in honor of – what I don't even know the dude's name. I keep – I should really write names down and write them down accurately, <laughs> but I forget the – the wide receiver's name devonta smith so devonta yeah. in honor of devonta smith's uh grinch celebration we're gonna do our top five touchdown celebrations of all time tony i know that you want to turn 
You like the Correct. turn. Yep. So I'm going to go first. And uh, I'm going to have a common theme here. But um, you know what? I'm going to go first, and I'll just let you take two of whatever I got because I'm pretty sure you got two of them here. But this is when I think of touchdown celebration. This is the first touchdown celebration I ever remember seeing. Right? Mm-hmm. I was a little kid. There was this the, – the best team, the, probably the best team that's ever played football – that's never won a championship, right? The best dynasty that's ever won played football, never won a championship. And the Buffalo Bills made it to four straight Super Bowls. They had a wide receiver called Andre Reed. And when Andre Reed would score, he would run up to the goalpost and prop up on it like Spider-Man, like he was stuck, right? Or whatever like that. So Andre yeah. Reed's Spider-Man. That's my favorite one. I'm picking it number one. It's probably not even on your list either. It's not. So but I have it's just the one that started celebrations for me so that's what i'm picking yeah it's got some sentimental value that's a good yeah yeah uh my two picks i'll make them both here lambo leap and the mile high salute those are also a couple of the first ones that i saw uh watching football they've been around for for a long time yeah mile high salute oh i fucking hated that i'm I'm pandering to the denver fans here yeah (laughs) the local area and also the military military crowd they love the the mile high salute yeah yeah there you go check all right I'm glad because neither one of those was on my, <laughs> so, uh, my, uh, let's go second one. I'm going to go with, uh, Terrell Owens claiming the Dallas star, oh, not good. once Tony, <laughs> but twice. Yeah. Dude. And then he ends up being a cowboy later on yeah, in life. It's weird. Terrell Owens, the greatest wide receiver to ever play football. I think he's so good. Randy Moss and he got blackballed. It's a shame that he wasn't the first ballot hall of famer. Yeah. So, um, speaking of hall of famers, I am going to go with, um, at the time he was Chad Johnson, but Ocho Cinco putting on the future Hall of Fame jacket (laughs) on the sidelines after, like, so many people were triggered by it, right? All these Hall of Fame nuts, big coach, like, Rex Ryan talks about it, and he's like, I was... uh, I was offended by the fact that he even put that jacket. It's so good. Just call it a shot. (laughs) Hopefully I get the next one that I want because it's going to tail into some of that kind of stuff, right? Like I am the greatest essentially. (laughs) And it was so good. So that's my second one or my third one there. Okay. Okay. Um, Those are good. Definitely stole one for me there. You son of a bitch. There we go. I like the hall of fame one. Chad Ochocinco. Uh, Third, the third one for me, I got two picks here doesn't really matter what order you mentioned to i'm glad you didn't take this one i like the star one but it was just weird that he like ended up a cowboy yeah but, uh, he did this one as a cowboy to popcorn in the helmet just like poured it all over his face <laughs> so good and that was like his thing right like get your popcorn ready yeah it was good and at the time i was a cowboys fan so i, I loved it there we go uh fourth one this is another one i used to watch uh when i was a kid when lt was still in the game and players still do it today it's the flick i don't know if you Every time he scores, he just like did the little finger roll. Yep. And you'll still yep. see guys doing it today. So it's kind of one of those ones that's kind of lingered a little bit like the Lambo Leap. Yep. Probably be around forever. So taking those two. There we go. All right. Then my last two here. Um, oh, damn it. I have so many good ones, man. I was hoping you'd have half of these, but apparently you don't. Um, fuck. Um, God damn it. Give me. I'm going to do. The Jamal Anderson, Atlanta mm. Falcons, Dirty Bird. It's good. Right? That one's so good. Everybody was doing it in school, yeah. right? You're playing like football in the yard or something like that. Elementary school, middle school, everybody doing yeah. a Dirty Bird, right? Or whatever like that. It was so fucking good. That's going to be a clip. Like, let's do the Dirty Bird. Yeah. They still, every now and then you'll see that someone pull that one out the, too. The thumbnail, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do we need to pose? Do you need us? Do you need some stills? There you go. We're good. If you're listening to this, we're just we're posing yeah, yeah, for pictures. Yeah, just ignore yeah, we're it. Posing for pictures. <laughs> uh, and then my last one I'm going to do uh, is going to be I hate I hate that he played for Michigan, but give me the Desmond Howard Heisman pose. So this yep. goes back to like the the Hall of Fame jacket thing, right? Like it's unheard of for people just to put out that. But you don't ever hear him like, I'm the greatest player, right? Mm-hmm. Tom Brady doesn't say that. I'm the greatest quarterback of all time. Yeah. I knew we were coming down 10, right? They they punted back to us. Uh, I got four minutes. We're winning a ball game because I'm the greatest yeah. of all time. Desmond Howard gets into the end zone fast as fuck and then just pops the Heisman pose. I just need the hell out of my table, but pops the Heisman pose. I'm the greatest player in college football. 
there's nothing you could do about it to stop me. I think that yeah. was awesome. So, big He's been the shit out of your desk. Like yeah, the camera I, shook and everything. My, my fucking knee hurts. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, your last one. Last one. We talked about NFL being entertainment. We talked about trash talking. This is this one has some trash talking. This is Randy Moss mooning the Packers. Yes, that's oh, the is it offensive? <laughs> I don't think it's offensive. Is it tasteless? Maybe. Is it entertaining though? Hell yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was so good. I don't think he actually mooned him. I think he just like did it, like did the motion right. Yeah, he did the motion, like went to the back of the end zone. And then you hear the announcers, that is the most distasteful yeah. thing. Shut I, up. It's the most viewed NFL celebration on I think YouTube. it was Joe Buck too. Like that's, yeah, I think yeah. it was Joe Buck. You mentioned not liking him. No, I don't think anybody does, but yeah, mm-hmm. it was him. Yeah, that was good. Um, on the bubbles that I had here was, I have a lot of Terrell Owens. Um, I'm just a big Terrell Owens guy. Terrell Owens dancing with the 49ers cheerleaders against the Packers. I think this is what I think this was a game that he broke Jerry Rice's like uh single game receptions record or something like that. Yeah. It was Jerry Rice's last game and Terrell Owens ended up breaking his like single game catches and until Brandon Marshall broke it later on, then he was the number one guy. But he goes and grabs the pom poms and dances with the cheerleaders. I got Terrell Owens pulling a Sharpie out of his sock to sign a football and give it to the fans. That's so good. Uh, that was like in the, it was like in the second quarter. You had that in your pocket the whole time or your sock yeah. the whole time? <laughs> yeah. Just waiting to score a touchdown. Yeah. Running routes. The best wide receiver Getting in the tackled. NFL. Just yeah. with a Sharpie, right? Uh, it's so good. Um, Ocho Cinco operating the camera to get fan shots after he catches a touchdown. That one's yeah, pretty good. That's good. Um, there was another guy who did that too. I forget who it was. Someone did it recently, like a current player. So it's not as good as Ocho Cinco doing it. But uh, anything Deion Sanders from 30 yards out was one of them that I had. Yeah. And then my last one, this one I wanted to put in there, but then you left me a couple. So um, Golden Tate, when he played for Notre Dame, catches a touchdown in the back of the end zone against Michigan, Michigan State and jumps into the Michigan State band. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so good. Like, the marching band's in the corner of the end zone or whatever yeah. like that. And fitting that James is a Michigan State fan, he's in here for a championship. But Golden Tate just launches <laughs> full on swan dive into the Michigan State band. It's so good. So good. You got any on the bubble? I had a couple, uh, the McCringleberry. So we talked about the pelvic thrust. Any, I think Jamal Williams did it this year. He got flagged for doing three uh, thrusts. So that's always <laughs> fun to see. That skit is hilarious. Yep. Uh, Doug Baldwin pooping a football. I don't know if yeah. you remember seeing that one. He's like squatted. And yeah. all you could see was like the back of his jersey. And you see the football drop down <laughs> to his legs. That's a good one. And then Zeke into the Salvation Army bucket. That's always good. He does it every year. Uh, yeah. They play on Thanksgiving. So that's usually when he does it. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. All right, let's move on to raves for the week. What do you got one before we get out of here? When are we going back to rant and rave? Why is this just a rave? It's just a rave right now. Fine. But you, be, anytime you have the rant positive. back, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, that'll be uh, the episodes that you're not on. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. Uh, all right, so so we all play, you know, in fantasy leagues with friends. I think all but one league that I'm in, mm-hmm. I know every manager or have at least heard them on a podcast. Uh, where they did like their intro bit, like James and Clint did for this one. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I'll rave about is people in those leagues. The people who I consider friends, even James and Clint, right? We've been playing in this league together for years. I've listened to their episodes. They seem like pretty good guys. You're yeah, friends with them. I imagine not, I'd be friends with them. Let's not go that far. Okay. Take they just, dial it back they, a little bit. <laughs> they pay on time. <laughs> that's, hey, that's, a, that's a very positive trait. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I would consider those guys friends. And you know, they would never, never, ever cheat their friends in a game that we're all very passionate about. They would never. So this week I'm raving about those guys and girls. Thank you for being upstanding fantasy football managers and good friends who never cheat against your friends. Yeah. Some of those people, I mean, it's almost like a karma karma thing, right? Like we've talked about believing in karma before here or whatever like that. Right. And putting out good, good into the universe. So that good comes back to you instead of bad. Right. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, you know, you do those things and maybe it's in a diff in, in one league. Right. But you're going to see the effect of it in other leagues. Right. Yeah. Where you may be the Sacco. Uh, I would, I would just encourage anybody not to do that because you might be playing for a Sacco. Right. And maybe you skate by, maybe your whole team ends up on the IR uh, in, in a league that, you know, is very prestigious. Mm-hmm. So um, also people who don't and, roster four players on their IR for multiple weeks of the season. Yeah. Also those people. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. 
fuck those guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for not doing that. Uh, other people, right? Other it people. makes the leaks yeah, very yeah. enjoyable. That, that was a good way to turn yeah. your rant into a, or yeah, rant into a rave. I was going to spin it somehow, Nate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, my rave, my rave, I talked a little bit last week about just humans right and like getting outside i guess you would say mm -hmm. right um and just like seeing that kind of stuff i guess um i saw it again this week and i guess i just want to keep raving about it because it's it's different like like i was in new york city there's there's homeless people right it's a large city or whatever like mm -hmm. that um there's a lot of money that goes around so people try to when they don't have anything go to an area where they can get help i guess you would say right where they're more likely to get help like you're not going to go to the middle of like south dakota and just sit on the corner mm -hmm. right you're probably yeah. not going to run into as many people not as much opportunity um but while i was in new york i it was like negative 15 out wind chill winds blowing and there's people just laying on the ground right on the street sides or whatever like that and everywhere almost every person i saw there was someone giving them warm food or coffee or helping them out i ate with what with a homeless guy in harlem because mm -hmm. I, I went up to Harlem to go eat at a place or whatever like that. And there was someone outside and I was just, I don't know. I've seen this for like, you know, six hours prior to being up there or whatever like that in different parts of the city. So I was just like, yo, you want to go grab some food? Right. Can I help you? I'll get you some food or whatever. And he's like, oh, yo, thanks or whatever like that. So wait, and I actually like sat down and had a meal or whatever. Right. But you know, not the crazy or nothing like that. Just talk about whatever going on and stuff like that. But, um, but I continuously saw people helping out other people. And I don't know if it's like the holiday time frame or whatever like that, but I mean, blistering cold conditions outside, people just laying in like sleeping bags above them, multiple jackets above them just to stay warm or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. And tons of people helping out people like that. I think it was pretty cool. I think it was, it was one of the best parts of going and, and things that I was seeing and stuff like that. So shout out to people helping out people in need. You never know um, what life is going to turn into. Yeah, and, comp compassion and empathy is something we should all have in our back pockets. Yeah. I love it. And love maybe that one little thing or that little little thing helps them get off, you know, or whatever like that. Or, yeah. or just get another day to get somewhere else or whatever like that, right? So yeah, for sure. continuous is all people helping out people in like subway stations because underground's a lot. It's colder. It's cold, but it's not as windy. Yeah. Uh, so it's a little bit warmer, right? Um, helping out people, getting up, like saw people buying like you know subway tickets for you know people and stuff like that it was mm -hmm. pretty dope so That's awesome. shout out shout out to those people so um let's do more of that shit go check out tony's podcast the 58 west king podcast uh you could check that out at 58 w king podcast on all socials as well it's linked down below for you you go check out the podcast watch the youtube stuff listen to it on youtube get youtube premium so you could just close your phone and it'll keep playing you could do that um those watch time hours really help grow the show. <laughs> People end up getting it in front of their eyes. We had a couple clips this last week from ours or from this one, Tony, that caught some steam, you know, yeah. 20, 30 views or something like that within a, Take that within a day or something like that, which is pretty cool. Um, but all those little things help out because more people start seeing it. I noticed that, you know, when I looked at some of the analytics stuff, and this is why I bring it up, right. To, I need to be better at supporting my friends, right. Sharing their stuff to my socials, interacting with it i don't actively go look for it i just like oh if it comes up in my feed i do it mm -hmm. but i need to be better at that um but those little things help because i noticed him i think it was the are the lions going to make the super bowl clip we put out mm -hmm. um i think it got to like 30 people or something like that but over 50 percent of it was from recommended videos and i didn't recommend it as one of the ones at the end oh. of any of ours so it's getting recommended in other people's videos right so I don't know. Just go fucking wash the shit. Help help the guys out, right? We don't want to go work regular jobs. We just want to do this five days, seven days a week, or whatever like that. It'd be dope. Spend you it watch the full practice. video, not the clips or the shorts, because I think that those watch hours eventually, once you sit, uh, once you hit a certain threshold, you can monetize, yeah. right? Yeah. You got to get a follower yeah. count too. But isn't it like a thousand watch hours or something like that? It's a thousand subscribers, four thousand watch hours, four thousand watch hours, right? Okay. So there you go. Share them with your friends. Uh, share it on your socials. Let somebody know. Say hey. You'll really hate this. You should watch it. Or you you might like this stuff. You might yeah. you should watch it. Or look what these guys are talking about or whatever. Or and maybe they don't like it, but they know they share it with a friend, right? Yeah. Like Pat McAfee says, share. Be a friend, tell a friend. But go check out Tony's podcast, Video West King Podcast. They're selecting picks head up every single week over the six hundred mark, right? 60, That's better 650. than 
Sixty-six fifty. That's yeah. better than Adam Rank. That's better than all the other people <laughs> that are having you pay for like something plus or whatever like that. And it's all free. Just go yep. check it out. Do big money line round robin. See if you win some money. Right. Yeah, that's kind of fun. But there you go. And if you don't blame them, but while you're blaming them, do it in the comments of YouTube. Please <laughs> get it to us. No. Just light us up. I like all your guys' little short form stuff because it's pretty quick and to the point. And you get oh, yeah. some fun, fun little commentary and stuff like yeah. that. So. And if, if you want the why, just listen to the full episode. Check it out on YouTube, podcast, yeah. whatever. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. We're going to be doing more of that here 2023. So that's one we thing go. that we're, we're going to have an episode about accountability um, in January or something like that of things yeah. that we don't hold each other accountable to. And that's going to be one of them. You, so. uh, you need any video clips edited, Nate? Huh? Um. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But I need to get over my. It's not going to look how I want it to look, or my thoughts yeah. right, and just be like, let's it's, let's go through the the lessons learned process for a month and a half, right? Figure it all right. out, and we understand how people like their own stuff, and then we. It's, it's like you said, twenty twenty three. This is the dry run. Like we're learning how to use Canva. Yep. We're learning kind of how all the algorithms work, how this yep. stuff is shared, and kind of it just gets aggregated amongst the masses. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> yep, I'm fine with one, it. I'm, I'm still going to bug you about the video stuff because you asked one, for help. I was ready. One one video a day. Uh, short form and a uh, clip on YouTube. Yeah. So, uh, and all the other socials. So one a day. So we should have 365. Uh, I don't know if it's a leap year, 365 videos minimum, minimum. I think we can get some longer episodes in the off season because we have more time to edit. So for sure. Um, but yeah, go check that out. Check out Terrence's podcast, the whiskey flick podcast. That is about movies and booze, uh, primarily movies. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a fun one. Go check that out. They're evergreen, so anything that you're thinking about, you can go recommend it to them uh, on all their socials, Whiskey Flick Pod, that is linked down below as well. Recommend a movie, right? What do you like? Hey, whatever season's coming up, Terrence likes to do stuff around the season of what it is, mm-hmm. right? Like, maybe I can get him to do a rom-com one and get, get into February. That would be pretty good. Mm-hmm. My jam. The kids watch The Notebook, and Layla's giving me a whole thing of, Dad, just randomly, we're in the mall. Dad, do you like um young noah or old noah and i was like what do you mean she's like in the notebook and i'm like what the fuck (laughs) yeah so um yeah go check out that podcast but in january tony we're going to be doing recap episodes of the year so i think what we'll end up doing and this is for all the listeners too so you know what to expect we're going to do a league recap right that's going to be probably next week i'm going to try to get one of the whoever the champion is on um to do that episode i don't know if you want to do a three-way if you want to that's cool too um (laughs) <laughs> let's do a three-way and then i just want to be the meat in the sandwich um so put me in the middle poke me for both ends um <laughs> and then uh <laughs> um and then we'll do a a fantasy recap an nfl type recap thing we're gonna do awards this year so Ooh. we'll see awards right yes. um i think that'll be pretty good yes. so we'll have an awards episode and then we'll start looking forward to you know we'll do some other stuff some fun stuff Give us some feedback on all the socials at Talking Court Pod. Uh, comment on a YouTube video of something that you guys want to see, or in the reviews of op- Apple, Google, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast at. Let us know how we're doing. What you want to hear? Uh, we're all about the takes. So whatever you want to do, we got some feedback. I did have a comment from one of the the Lions YouTube uh, clip that I put out, and I think the person deleted it, but it shows up in my notification, but it doesn't show up under the video. Okay. Um, but it was a Lions fan. It's like, uh, we fumbled the bag this week, but we need to win two or one out of two to get yeah. in. And this has to happen. And I think that we ended up getting that victory this week or whatever. Let's go Lions, right? So I uh, forget the guy's name, but uh, thank you for leaving a comment. That's always fun to see the comments and stuff like that too. So yeah, uh, it's, it's really fun. Banger of the week. So I was listening. I was in Madison Square Garden. You hear arena music, right? And then it brought back jock jams. And so I've been listening to Jock Jams ever since Christmas Day. <laughs> and I went through all of the albums of Jock Jams. And I figured, you know what? Maybe we need to do a draft later on. That's like the best songs from Jock Jams or something like that. But um, whenever you hear these songs, I don't know, for me, it just takes me back to Jock Jams. Like anytime I hear like, um, I don't know, come baby, come baby, baby, come, come, or whatever like that. It's yeah. Jock Jams, uh, volume one, like, song four or something like that right i know where it is on the albums or whatever like that but we do five segments here top of my manager manager news and those a draft and raves 
or rants and raves, uh, whatever it is. So the fifth song that comes up on Jock Jams Volume 1, It Takes Two, Rob Bass, DJ Easy Rock, for Tony of the 58 West King Podcast. I am Nate. Love you, bye. I-T-F-D-B. Some will know what that means. If you know, you know.